reading from the New International Version. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. For this purpose, yes, I think the, uh, the version you read from Ver happened to miss that word <laughs> for this purpose. But um, the version that I was looking at says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. A story is told about a lighthouse keeper who worked on a rocky stretch of coastline. Once a month, he would receive a supply of new oil to keep the light burning so that ships could safely sail by the treacherous coast that was there. One night, however, a, an elderly woman came from a nearby village and she begged him, please, please give me some oil to keep my family warm. And so he relented. Another time, a good friend dropped by and says, can I just have a little bit of oil for my lamp for tonight? Again, he gave. Another man needed to lubricate a seized up wheel and so on it goes. And since all the requests seemed like for a legitimate purpose, the lighthouse keeper tried to please everyone and granted their requests. Towards the end of the month, however, he noticed his supply of oil was getting quite low dangerously low and so it was on one dark night that the light finally went out in the lighthouse that night several ships that were coming by were wrecked and lives were lost and when the authorities investigated the man was very apologetic he told them he was just trying to be helpful and it was just a little bit of oil the investigators replied and they said to his excuses, you were posted here to this lighthouse for one purpose. And we send you oil every month for one purpose. One purpose. To keep the light on in the lighthouse. One purpose. Friends, today I want to ask you, what is your purpose? What are you called to do? I think we're all called to shine our lights, aren't we? Isn't that true? What course of direction is your life heading in? At the end of 2021, have you stayed true to the intentions that you set out on? If we have no purpose, we are like a rudderless boat going this way and that way, aren't we? If we have no purpose, we can get swept up by whatever seems important to other people. Today we want to look at Jesus' purpose and how he brought light and hope into the world. You know, a few days ago, and some of you have already touched on aspects of this, I was talking to my mum and uh, she says, what's wrong with these people? She says, there's so much craziness in the world. She says, the COVID is surging everywhere again and yet everyone is out en masse. Shopping, true? Shopping, the shopping centres are full, you know, meeting their Christmas deadlines, shopping because it's Christmas. It doesn't take much for us to be swept up by Christmas sales. It doesn't get, take much for us to get swept up by distressing news that we always get these days, a, a plethora of different social media influences, probably more so for the young people, to get swept up by herd mentality as opposed to herd immunity. <laughs> if we have no purpose, the evil one will make sure that we get swept up. But today, as believers in Jesus, let us remember that Jesus had purpose. He came here with a purpose and he stuck to that purpose. As we had read in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil. By staying focused on his mission, true to his purpose, Jesus was able to defeat Satan and deliver the sinner. And today, Jesus' mission, Jesus' purpose, is something that we all can participate in 
on a daily basis. So let's open, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open to John chapter 1. Uh, I know our, our scripture reading was from 1 John, but we'll be looking at John chapter 1. And I always uh, open John with a little bit of trepidation because I know our scholar, uh, Brother Furch, uh, goes into very much more detail when he, when he exposes the, the Gospel of John. Right, Andrew? <laughs> Um, John chapter 1, we're going to be looking at some key points regarding Jesus' mission and his purpose. And the first point here that I want to look at is uh, in verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14, it tells us that Jesus, you know the message that I get here, Jesus wants to dwell with us, within us. And so we read here in verse 14, and the word became flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. On that silent night, that holy night, an amazing miracle took place that changed the course of history forever. Jesus coming to this earth literally changed history. There have been a few things that have likely changed the modern world in our lifetimes, haven't there? We could probably name quite a few, actually, but in more recent times, you could say that mobile communications, the internet, you know, it's changed the way we live over the last 30 years, right? Then you could say that terrorism, and particularly, I guess, September 11, changed the way that we live our lives over the last 20 years. And, of course, COVID-19 has permanently changed the way that we live our life, probably, into the future. But the event that divides history into two, B.C. and A.D., was the coming of Jesus Christ. B.C. being before Christ and A.D., Anno Domini, or meaning in the year of our Lord. It divides history into two. As the coming of the Saviour was announced to Mary and then to Joseph... We read in Matthew 1, verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which is translated, what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. God with us. God has always wanted to be with us. But since the fall that we read of in Genesis chapter 3, there has been a separation. And we see during the Exodus as we've saw in our our, um, study of Deuteronomy over the last quarter, God wanted to be with his people. He wanted to tabernacle among them. And so here we see the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Of course, most likely, Jesus' birth was actually at the time of Sukkot, right? Time of tabernacles, right? Another way of... The, the, the word Sukkot, uh, the, the Jewish people celebrate the Sukkot, etc. And, uh, it's the time of Feast of Tabernacles. Makes sense, right? Jesus died at the time of Passover and he was most likely born at the time of Tabernacles. He tabernacled among us. He dwelt among us. And so he came at that time and died at the other time. There's two periods of those festivals during the year, right? So today, Jesus still desires to tabernacle among us. Jesus brings with him grace and truth into our life. The question for us is, do we invite him into our life? Do we invite him into our home? At the beginning of this chapter, we see that Jesus is our creator. He's our God. Reading from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, we see, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. It just boggles the mind, doesn't it, to think that the Word, who is Jesus, uh, the one who has existed from eternity, could become one of us, a human made a little lower than the angels to taste death for everyone, according to Hebrews chapter 2. 
Hebrews 1 also tells us that Jesus, the Son, made the world, right? He, he's creator of everything. Same here in John chapter 1. All things were made through him and nothing was made without him that was made. You know, I'm sure we've all heard accounts of uh, desperate parents, mother or father, that have rushed into a burning building to save their child. I personally know somebody who's been saved uh, in a fire. The brother perished. But the, child, the one child at least was saved. You know, many times parents rush in and they themselves perish. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're able to save themselves and their children, whatever. But the point is, if a human being a fallen, sinful human being has the capacity to do such a heroic act. How much more do you think our creator was willing to enter into like, you know, dangerous environment here on this earth, uh, an environment that had been hijacked by the devil to save those who are willing from the clutches of the devil, from the clutches of death? Jesus did that for us. Jesus, or Yeshua, meaning saviour. He's our true hero, our superhero, our deliverer, our redeemer. And he offers to come to recreate you. Isn't that awesome? You know, um, all comic book heroes, Hollywood heroes, whatever they might be, even the ones they call superheroes, are uh, just like Mickey Mouse, aren't they? Compared to what Jesus has done for us on this earth. It's incomparable. Compared to the life and death mission that Jesus came into this world for, where literally the balance of not just this earth, but the universe hung in the balance. Everything was at stake. And so we go on to point number three, where Jesus came and Jesus is really the, shy, uh, the light that shines in a dark place. Verse 4, we read here in John chapter 1, that, uh, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus brought wonderful hope, healing, life and light to those whom he encountered, wherever he went. You know, he would go around healing the sick. And there are many, many miracles that are mentioned in the, in the Gospels of Jesus healing the sick. We could just ask blind Bartimaeus, right? If he was here, he would tell us. Or we could ask the woman that came and touched his coat. The woman with the blood flow. He was also casting out demons. And if we could, we could just ask Mary, who, uh, you know, it's written that she had seven demons cast out of her, right? Or the demoniac who had a legion of demons in Mark chapter 5. Uh, Jesus would go around forgiving sins. We could just ask the woman at the well. Or we could ask the Apostle Paul, who calls himself the chief of sinners. Jesus went around enriching the lives of the spiritually destitute. And if we could, we could just ask Zacchaeus. Or we could ask those that were listening at the Sermon on the Mount, you know, who as they heard the words of Jesus said, we've never heard anything like this before. Jesus went around giving purpose to the aimless. And sometimes in this world we may feel, you know, what is the purpose? Things are aimless. Just the other week I was talking to my neighbour and uh, she shared that her son had gone to Canberra because a friend of his that he'd gone to school with had committed suicide. And she says, this is like the seventh or eighth person that he knows that has done this. Why do people do this? I think purpose makes a huge difference. Obviously there are, you know, there are mental health issues, etc. But purpose gives us meaning and hope in this world, doesn't it? 
And so Jesus went around giving purpose to the aimless. And really we only need to look at some of the ordinary lives of the 12 disciples who chose to leave whatever they were doing and follow Jesus. Yes, Jesus brought light, hope and purpose wherever he went. You know, years ago on on our honeymoon actually, uh, I remember we were doing a wreck dive uh, off the island of St. Lucia in the Caribbean. Anyone ever been diving here? No one been, yes, diver here? Done a wreck dive? No? (laughs) I probably wouldn't do one again. (laughs) Uh, It's not my favourite thing. I love diving, but not so much the wreck dive. And um, the reason is probably because of what happened here, you know, we had, there was a group of us, and, and when you're doing a dive like this, you follow the, the dive master, the leader. But uh, for some reason, he didn't give everybody a torch. I lucked out. I didn't have a torch. <laughs> and so I recall being in some compartment of this sunken ship surrounded by fire coral. And for those of you who know, you don't want to touch fire coral. Um, making my way up, you know, there was this, everybody else had gone up and I was the last one, making my up way up this ladder through a small porthole in total darkness. Now, um, I've been in dark caves before, and you probably have too, uh, where they, you know, they switch off all the lights and they say, you know, put your hand in front of your face and see if you can see your hand. It's pretty dark. Um... Because you cannot, you cannot see your hand. But when you're in a small dark compartment, 20 metres below the surface of the water, with a finite oxygen tank on your back, you really don't want things to go wrong. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I recall for a few moments, what seemed like an eternity, that it was a dark and a bit scary place to be. And thinking back, you know, it could have been one of those headline news stories, you know, honeymoon husband missing in wreck dive. (laughs) One of those disaster stories of a honeymoon, you know. Physical darkness can be a scary place. But friends, spiritual darkness is a place of no hope at all. Spiritual darkness can truly be a scary place, at least it should be, if we're aware of it, but sometimes people are not even aware of it. But Jesus brought light. Jesus brought light into a world of darkness. And Jesus is still bringing life and light into the world today. Today, as we, as we read, uh, some did not comprehend it back then and today. Some still do not comprehend it, right? Some don't want to. But for those who do... It is life. It is life and it is hope, like a light that shines in a dark place. Why? How? Have you experienced Jesus? You know, the next point here, point number four, is that Jesus takes away us. He's the Lamb of God. And as we look at John the Baptist's proclamation here in John chapter 1, verse 20, 29, we see the underlying purpose of Jesus' mission that brings eternal hope. Let's go to John 1, verse 29, and we see the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. By coming to take away sin, Jesus destroys the works of the devil. Do you see that? You see that link between 1 John 3, 8 and here? Jesus destroys the work of the devil. That's the purpose of Jesus' mission, to destroy the works of the devil and to save the human race. What does the devil do? The Bible tells us he seeks to steal, kill, destroy. He he is a liar from the beginning, right? He's the father of lies. He is the author of sin, the author of rebellion. He just brings sadness, sickness, And ultimately death. So friends, do you find it liberating today? Do you find it liberating that Jesus has done something amazing for you by coming to this earth? It's not something, what Jesus did for us is not something we can do for ourselves. 
You know, you can't just pull yourselves up, pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. It's something only God can do for us. And it's what God promises to do for us if we are willing. Emmanuel, God with us. Yeshua. The name Yeshua. Because he will save people from their sins. Defeating the works of the devil. Good news, right? So point number five. Through Jesus, then, we can be children of God. Coming back to John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, we read, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And this is that new birth that Jesus talks about, or, you know, as in evangelical language, people use the term born again, right? being born again, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. For each one of us, friends, I believe that God has a purpose. It may not always be clear, and I think um, Adam Ramden kind of touched on that. As I saw the video this morning, he was talking about your purpose, you know, making decisions in life, etc. And it may not always be clear to us every step of the way, but, <clears throat> but friends, God has a purpose for our salvation. God has a purpose of a future and a hope for each one of us. God has a purpose for our very existence. He knew us before we were even born, knit together in the womb, as we read earlier. If you want to open to Romans 8, verses 28. Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We read there that we are all what? Called, right? Sorry, Romans. Yes, Romans 8 28. We are all called according to his purpose. You see that there? And we know, it says there, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. How do we know that? Because Jesus came and made that very, very clear. If we skip down to verse 32, we see there, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give how sorry, sorry how shall he not with him also freely give us all things how god wants to give us all things jesus wants to freely give us all things as many as received him he gave the right to become the children of god to those who believe in his name. God has made it possible through Jesus. And the only part that remains for us to do then is to respond. To respond to Jesus. You know, it's not too hard. Point number six here. Uh, oh, sorry, I missed this slide. That was the verses that we just read. Um, point number six, Jesus' appeal to us then is to follow me. You know, when the disciples came asking about Jesus and where he was from, etc., he says, in, again, in, in John 1, he says there in John 1, verse 39, he says, come and see. That's Jesus' invitation to us today too. Come and see. Check it out. And then it says the following day in verse 43, it says um, that he met Philip. And he said to him, follow me. He did that back then and he does it today. And friends, today the call is the same for each one of us. Come and see. Check it out. Taste and see. Follow me. You know, John also writes in his later letter, 1 John 5, he says, he who has the Son has life. He who has the Son has life. Friends, the question for us today is, do you have the Son? Do you have this life? Do you want this life? Today, as we come to the end of 2021, as many 
celebrate the material excess. Ernie, you mentioned, what was it, $20 billion? Was, was that just Australia? <laughs> $20 billion? Uh, just in Australia, as many celebrate with, you know, well, sorry, with, with, with parties and with a jolly time, etc. It's all well and good, but, you know, let's remember how much the Lord loves each one of us. And his sole purpose for coming to this earth was to seek and save the lost. To destroy the works of the devil. What is your purpose? What is our purpose in life? You know, the birth of Christ means little or nothing to us if he hasn't been born in our heart. More than 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in a stable. But today, has he been born in your heart? Actually, the two, I may have shared this before here, but the two have some very much, you know, things in common, a lot of similarities, the stable and the heart. Imagine the stable, you know, it's a smelly, dirty sort of place. Not really the most desirable place for a king, right? And then now imagine your heart, or at least what it represents. Polluted, defiled corrupt. Again, not really the place for a king, king of the universe. And yet Jesus loves us so much, he wants you to invite him into your heart, cholesterol and all. <laughs> uh, he wants to be part of your life. He wants to dwell with us so he can help us with the problem that we all face with, and that is the works of the devil, sin. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. It's no coincidence that Jesus was born in a stable because Jesus is willing to go to great lengths to help the sinner, to come alongside us, to dwell with us, to tabernacle with us. Amazing, isn't it? The Saviour lowered himself down to our level, down to our poverty, so that he could be with us, so that he could teach us how we, of little status of, or influence, can walk with God. Isn't that amazing? Friends, we are children of God. Children with a purpose. I wonder, you know, I think to some degree everyone has this desire to make a positive change in the world. And I think it's something that we, we asked God to, to bless little William with too, right, as he grows up, that he may be a blessing to the world. And we all want to leave something behind, some sort of a legacy, right, some sort of, you know, impact on the world. But you need to have purpose to do that, right? Jesus gives us that purpose. Today, I want to ask, you know, what do you think you could do? As I, as I thought about it, you know, I thought, some year or so ago, a year or two ago, I came across this video of this guy who was just very much into just... <laughs> he was actually a party organiser. <laughs> he wasn't just a party goer, he was a party organiser. He would organise, you know, a thousand or so people and to just come together and in some place in South America or some various places around the world they would go and they would just party. And then one day he kind of realised, what, what is all this for? He was at one of these parties and he thought to himself, you know, what am I doing? Is this, is this it? Is this, is this life? Is this what it's all about? And, uh, and he just switched. I mean, obviously he's being led by God to make such a switch. And today he works in, um, he set up a charity where his, his mission is to ensure that everyone on planet Earth has access to clean water. Isn't that amazing? And they've done some amazing work over the years already. But, you know, channeling all that energy instead of just to, you know, party and drugs and alcohol and everything that goes along with it, loud music or whatever, uh, and obviously some, you know, some memories to go along with it, to changing the world. Um, 
you know, when I think about my own life, you know, I could, I could still be out there doing some good things, building bridges or, you know, I could be working on the metro lines here in Sydney <laughs> or tunnelling. You know, we've got so many tunnels under Sydney now, right? I was talking to an engineer that works on one of these tunnels and, and uh, you know, as, as, as we got talking, I was like, hey, yeah, that would be an interesting kind of thing to be working on, you know? But, uh, you know, God has called me to a different purpose. And maybe he's calling you to a different purpose too. I'm not saying you need to change your job. <clears throat> but think about what purpose God may have for you in your life. You know, you can write your story as you cooperate with God's purpose in your life. What do you think that could be in 2022 and beyond? What could you do? What could you be? Think about your purpose. Are you living in a BC kind of life or an AD kind of life? Who or what are you praying for? I think that probably reveals a lot, doesn't it? You know, what do we pray about? Do we just pray for ourselves? Or we pray for other people as well. We pray for the world around us. Today, I want to ask you to spend some time to consider your purpose. You know, Jesus came into this world with a purpose, and he stuck to that purpose. May we spend some time considering our purpose. You know, is the direction that we're heading in, is that the direction that Jesus is calling us to? If you were to talk to him today, is there anything he would change? And in closing today, you know, I would have just... Uh, Pray that Jesus brings life and light into your life, purpose into your life. That's what Jesus came to do, to bring light, to bring hope into the world. And my prayer for each one here today is that he may do that for you in your life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, today we thank you that you love us so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank you, Lord, for the life and the light that you offer. May your purpose be moulded with our purpose in life. May our purpose be directed by your purpose. And may we do amazing and wonderful things in this world that brings glory and honour to your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we finish off with a final song, I wanted to read from Colossians chapter 1 and uh, verses 13 to 16 here read like this. He, being Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And finally, verses 21 to 23. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by your works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven. Today, may we remember what Jesus has done for us, and may this make an impact on your life today, on your journey forward, and right through into eternity. May God bless you. Amen.